मैडम इज देयर तुम सी मैडम अच्छा ओके एंड दैट्स द वाइट आशीष मित्र सर सी जस्ट ट्राइंग टू कनेक्ट ओके 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 आई कॉल हिम ओके ओके Our director sir has he joined? Hmm. Hello. Hello. Our director sir. Not yet joined. Not yet joined. Oh, boss. Okay, just I just check. Have this. No, no, no not yet. No, director sir, not joined yet. If he comes, then uh, we will introduce him to our Basak sir. Okay. Very good. Thank you. मित्र सर बोल तनुश्री मैम स्टार्ट टाइम Uh, 725. 725. Okay, because participants are only 25. Okay, they are joining. Okay, to, in uh, 725, we can just remember uh, just give the brief introduction about the process, sir. After that, uh, actually, you will start the session. Okay, okay, okay. Let me ask you a minute. Your alarm is ringing. That is all. ओके सर आपनी 90 मिनट करते वाला हूं देन आफ्टर द 10 मिनट्स फॉर एयर क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सेशन ओके आई एम आई 80 50 मिनट में शेष करने की चेष्टा करूंगा ओके 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 सर थैंक यू सर लेट्स सी आई एम आई 80 मिनट एक का अलार्म दीची हम टॉक आरंभ करबो ये जो जाते करे प्रत्येक के जन इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी था के यार की जे जा बोले छे 1 घंटा 20 मिनट सही तो
Asam sir, director sir have joined. Excuse me. Not yet, I think. I have asked him. no we do, don't get any response okay so mr ma'am you can start now so good, good evening everyone uh, we have come to the first day third session of the online fdp and this session will be taken by professor shubhas chandra basak he's from university of uh, minnesota duluth usa uh, he will be talking on the topic uh, use of mathematical structural descriptors in the computer assisted design of new drugs and protection of the environment uh, professor shubhas uh, basak is currently an adjunct professor in the department of chemistry and biochemistry of university of minnesota and duluth USA. He received his PhD in biochemistry in 1981 from the University of Calcutta, India. His current research interests involve discrete mathematical chemistry and its applications to uh, chemoinformatics, bioinformatics, quantitative uh, structural activity relationships, computational toxicology, and mathematical quantification of DNA RNA sequences, mathematical proteomics uh, and computer aided vaccine design for emerging pathogens like Zika virus, COVID 19. Dr. Basak is the editor in chief of the International Journal Current Computer Aided Drug Design. 
he was involved in editing three books statistical and machine learning approaches for network analysis and advances in mathematical chemistry and applications and zika virus basic biology uh, surveillance vaccine design and anti zika drug discovery computer assistive strategies to combat the menace nova that is 2019 dr bosak has authored more than 335 Uh, papers and book chapters dr basak received a total of us dollar that is 746017 in grants and contracts for support of his research i will uh, request i would like to request sir to please take over the session thank you very much for your kind introduction uh, and i first uh, must uh, thank Dr. Gain and Dr. Ashish Mitra for giving me the opportunity to talk in this interesting conference. And good morning to the American audience. Good early morning to those who are in the East Coast area. Good afternoon to the Europeans and good evening to the to the Indians. This is the title of my talk, and you have already uh, mentioned that. So. Two thing I would like to mention. One is I have done research, uh, written papers with. more than 75 collaborators now these collaborators are those with whom either i have written a paper or written a research grant or both i call their spread throughout four continents so i call them my virtual team that doesn't mean they are virtual they are real but they, we are connected to the cyber space usually most of the time so and this name if i go by the last name it starts the b zelko baizar and Well, Subramanian and goes all the way to Yuri uh, Zupan, who starts with Z or Z. So uh, instead of showing all of the name together, one of the one of my friends in the geographic information system he said that if we show this in this way, that which how many people with which countries I am collaborating in Canada, Italy, Slovenia, and Croatia. Uh, later in the program, one Slovene scientist will give a talk, and then China, Thailand in the mosquito repellent design, India. I could collaborate. A couple of Indians will, will give talk about this, and then Colombia, South America. So I have a worldwide interaction with people. So and then acknowledgement. Although we are theoretical, I am a theoretical chemist now, but we don't need chemical or animal or testing lab, but we need to eat. so we had some grants from different agencies and uh, over my lifetime of my tenure in the university of minnesota i got over 7.5 million dollars from us environmental protection agency air force and then atsdr which is part of cdc and united states department of agriculture so i have to be thankful to them so i will mainly talk today about the two branches of what we call the science quantitative structure activity relationship what it means from the molecular structure of a chemical can we quantitatively predict their activity property bioactivity toxicity this field is called qsar quantitative structure activity relationship and there are two two major approaches of doing that one is physical property based you can take one physical pro some physical property or simple biological property and predict more complex property another is a graph theory based which is called the graph invariant i will discuss that later on what invariant means i will try to discuss this two mainly today this is a complicated slide uh, i have been doing this for about four decades but for this talk i have tried to understand that what is going on if you look at the left line left lane of this slide we see that initial idea is an intuitive idea comes from somebody like 1868 columbus and fraser he had the intuitive idea that properties of molecules they are related to their size complexity that means properties of molecule related to the structure about the same time interestingly and and then you see Uh, then 1899 overton my my and overton they came up with the idea more quantitative idea 
instead of the intu intuitive idea that narcosis with the biological property is a function of their oil water partition coefficient. So from intuitive idea of Cam Brown and Fraser, in a few years, they come up with a more quantitative relationship where we predict one property for another property. So in India, there is a saying that if you want to catch a wild elephant, you have to have a, have a tame elephant, otherwise you'll break your bones. So these simple properties, which are used for predicting more complex properties, they are the same elephant of pharmacology and toxicology. Then Hammett came in 1935, American chemistry came up with the idea Hammett Sigma, then tapped in 1956, eighth parameter, and then finally about 62, 64, Corwin Hans came up with the idea that we are combine all of these together. So basically, first was the intuitive idea from Brown and Fraser. Then a relationship between one property to another. Then Corwin Hans took different properties together so that you know the biological activity is a function of different properties like steric, electronic, hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic, such and such. So this was the physical property lane. If you go to the right lane, this graph theoretical lane, initially it started with, in 1736 by Euler, known famous Konigsbridge, Konigsberg Bridge problem. There were two islands, seven bridges road. So there was a challenge. And from that, he came up with the idea that, you know, he, he, he discovered graph theory. But then after that, more than a century went on before Sylvester. He was a, I think, British mathematician. He came up with the idea that chemical structure where you write on the board or in the book there's are nothing but graphs chemical is a chemical graph so if we look at the crumb brown's 1968 work and this sylvester 1778 about the same time they were thinking about chemical structure and how to predict property in, 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 in using chemical structure then started after Sylvester 1878, he had the intuitive idea again, just like Ram Brown and Fraser, that you know, these chemical structures are graphs. But then more than a century went by before Harry Dinard in 1947, he came up with the idea how these molecular graphs can be quantified, what you call Dinard index. Then Haruya Hosoya of Japan in 1971, he came up with the Hosoya index, Milan Rendig 1975. Randig index well known. Kieran Hall, 72 onward, they did a lot of work, lots of things in this area. Then Bonjam and Tenestige in 1977, Informant Theoretic Index. Then Balaban, Alexander Balaban, 1982. Then Dr. A.P. Roy from Yadavpur University, myself and Amer American scientist Magnuson, we worked on some Informant Theoretic Quantitative Structure Activity Relationship. But most of the time, until now, we were working, or they were working on one or two index at a time. But then in 1983, when I established myself in Duluth, a University of Minnesota, we developed the program Poly and started high dimensional QSR, means taking a large number of descriptors, how to do QSR. So that is another era that started. So this is basically, in a nutshell, the story of these two approaches. One is a Physical chemically based approach, another is the graph theory based approach. So, physical chemically based approach started 1868 with Crumb Brown and Fraser. But the graph theory, although uh, Euler did not do any chemistry, but he is the, he's the father of the graph theory. Without him, we could not do anything. Sylvester realized that structure chemical graph 1878. And then, up till now, you will see now there are many, many different people who are working on the substructure, subgraph, and topological indices, stuff like that. So now it is the left flank, again, showing that this is what happened 1868 until 1961, still going on. So a brief history, again, the biological response of molecule is a function of chemical structure. Then oil water partition coefficient, Meyer of Horton said, related to narcosis is a non-specific biological property. Then Hammett and Tap. And then Corwin Hunch around 1964, when Fujita came to him, he wrote in a paper at his post talk, they started doing the multi-parameter approach. So basically what is happening here in this physical chemically based approach is a property-property correlation. When a property one is a function of property two, 
but in order to do this thing they really don't need to know the structure because they are talking about one property another property we know one property and uh, then can predict another property then that property is enough we don't need to do anything else so basically if we summarize this what is the evolution Rambam and Fraser, his idea was qualitative then overton and meyer their idea is more quantitative from one property they, they are thinking about a function you know like y equal to fx kind of function and then finally you know hans and then hammett and tapped ultimately hans he came up with the because domain specific qsr but particular class of chemical we can use this uh, properties derived from physical organic chemistry so that is how it evolved first qualitative then semi-quantitative then finally more quantitative now these are some of the references i am giving them in case uh, people are interested they can consult them or if you want to know more i can give them some more difference now today i will discuss about this thing this is a nutshell idea the the fundamental research that is going on in my team in mathematical chemistry we develop some software for computational chemistry application those computational chemistry software we have applied in two different areas one is quantitative structure activity relationship modeling another is quantitative molecular similarity analysis given two molecules how similar are they how can we use multi-dimensional space based on this mathematical descriptor to compute mutual similarity dissimilarity of the substances and then those those ideas qsar and qmsa will be applied in estimation of chemical physical properties for engineering other application computer assisted drug design hazard assessment of environmental pollutant there are many thousands of them and finally surveillance of global pathogens like zika covid that also can be done using bio using uh, bio okay so major topics to be covered then today will be quantitative structure activity relationship arbitrary molecular similarity and their application then we develop the idea of tailored similarity which is a domain specific similarity and finally biodescriptor which is the very exciting area in this age of bioinformatics and then genomics proteomics and all this you know global pathogen so i will try to summarize the story in terms of the three w's why computational chemistry what is computational chemistry and where to apply computational chemistry these three w's so why computational chemistry we look at the thinkers of say the galileo galilee that universe is a grand book which cannot be read unless you know the language he's saying it is written in the language of mathematics so and chemicals and biological systems and by viruses they are no, no exception we have to understand them we have to take quantitative mathematical approach but then problem is when we mathematize something it becomes kind of obscure sometimes so that is what our german poet Goethe, Goethe said mathematics is a species of french man if you say something to them they translate it into their own language and presto it is something entirely different means when mathematicians take it to develop a formula about the chemical about anything about the viral bacteria protein it becomes so complicated sometimes that the person who gave the data or generated the data doesn't understand what is going on so that is the obscurantism that comes from mathematics so basically there is a there are two things we are between rock and hard place one is that you have to learn mathematics in order to understand nature but then if you apply mathematics it become intractable sometimes so here are some reasonable guidelines our own indian charaka he said those alone are wise who act after the investigation that means evidence based data based you know about the covid they are always talking about what is the data what is going on every day i get new papers and then Ernest Rutherford, he was a little pragmatic. He said, we haven't got the money. So we have got to think. That means, you know, we, we want to test everything in the world. We cannot do that. So we have to do thinking so that we can 
we can do a better work about testing. So need for chemical evaluation. Why we need to do chemical evaluation? Modern lifestyle is dependent on the use of thousands of chemicals. Now, food additive, pesticide, herbicide, the cosmetics, you name it, you know, drugs, ah, true shine chemical, you know, uh, all these are chemicals, they ultimately go to the environment. We need to evaluate these chemicals for their various purposes, new drug discovery, risk assessment, and then specialty chemical design, medical diagnostics, and drug discovery on the average cost about two billion US dollars per drug. This is very costly. That's why prescription drugs, they are very costly. And hazard assessment of chemicals, risk assessment is also very costly. So here is the idea. Suppose, you know, from, from a pond in Kolaghat, somebody gets a chemical, you know, from, from a plant, and he thinks that it has a biological property. But that chemical really doesn't go from the chemist's desk to the pharmacist, to the, to the bedside of the patient. So usually one has to create a large number of derivatives of that chemical and test them. Here is a hypothetical example. Suppose this chemical is a lead chemical, we call. And then if we put 50 groups in this aromatic position, 10 in the stratification, 10 in the aliphatic carbon, 10 in the nitrogen, the total becomes 312 billion annual. So if we put, you know, 10 chemists, you know, to do 10 chemical per day, how many, how many, how many years it will take to complete this 312 billion? That means it is not possible. So this becomes a kind of astronomical problem, which is, which is a kind of intractable problem. So at one time when regulation was not that much strong and we did not know much, they would say, well, take a molecule, you take methyl, ethyl, butyl, and then finally you will get a drug. But now at the present time, the situation is methyl, ethyl, butyl, and futyl. Okay. So that's the situation. What happens in the case of drug discovery, here I'm starting with the 10,000 compounds, sometimes it's more. Then uh, they do the pre-clinical study, and then finally, you know, clinical trial, and ultimately one or one compound probably stays. So basically, that is why, you know, you start with a large number, but then you get only one or two. That's why in the early stage, if one can, one can, you know, decrease the number of chemicals that is to be tested, then that can save a lot of money. So that's why computational chemistry in this kind of situation can act as a decision support system. Not that computer chemistry will tell, yeah, here is the drug, no. But they will tell us to prioritize the ones which could, which are promising and also deleting the ones or rather you know uh, not uh, testing the ones which are not that promising at all that's why it is called the valley of death that is the basic research and then applied technology transfer in the middle many compounds they die it is called the valley of death and drug design is known as a finding a needle in a big haystack so you have to be smart if there is a small needle in the big haystack like 100,000 chemicals, there is one beautiful drug, one blockbuster drug, how to find it? That is the, that is the issue. And that is where computational chemistry can help a lot. Now I go to the toxicology. As I told, said before, the modern lifestyle uses thousands of chemicals. In US, there is a, uh, there is a uh, database called TOSCA, Toxic Substances Control Act in Mentory. Is a, there was a law by Congress, and they said test the all the chemicals which are in the industrial industrial use. And then this is called there are uh, this is eighty thousand. This really this number should be eighty six thousand, about eighty six thousand. And then right, situation is that these chemicals, you know, chemicals can cause toxicity by many different ways. JBS Halden, Professor Halden, who became Indian citizen uh, during his last year, he had a poem you know, when he had cancer. He said, I know that cancer often kills, but so do cars and sleeping pills. And it can hurt one till one sweats. And can, so can bad teeth and unpaid debts. So basically, he's saying there are many ways people can be hurt. You know? So toxicity 
by chemical can be brought about in many different mechanisms. And say, as a result, what happens, we need to know a lot of properties of a chemical to estimate the toxicity. Like here, there are two panels of properties, some physiochemical property like molar volume, boiling point, melting point, vapor pressure, aqueous solubility, partition coefficient, octadal water, air water, sediment water, blood air, tissue air, this. And then there are some biological property like receptor binding, and then Michael is constant, and then uh, mutagenicity, you name it. There are a large number of properties we need to do make sense of the chemicals. And also the chemicals, when they go into our body, they also are converted to daughter products. As a result, you know, they also can be toxic, and we have to know their potential toxicity. So toxicology is a very, very broad branch where you need to know a lot of different toxic endpoints of a chemical and its metabolic product so but what is the what is the situation of the available data as i said before if we have property one you can predict property two if we want to predict toxicity do we have other simple properties that i showed before these properties are they available answer is no tosca has about eighty six thousand chemicals List is increasing by about 3,000 per year. And availability of data, more than 50% of the new chemicals have no taste data. And that is that is a 1990 paper, but with time, it is becoming even worse. More chemicals are coming, uh, they are being synthesized and tested. They are coming to human societal use. But most of them, or increasingly less and less of those, have any taste data. So the thing is that toxicologists, they have to uh, do their risk assessment in a data poor situation. So, what are the alternatives of this? One is laboratory testing, another is property property correlation. If we have simpler properties by which predict complex properties, if that is not possible, one can do QSAR from property or structure. We call QSAR quantitative structure activity relationship or quantitative structure property relationship. But sometimes what happens if we want to do that, we need a chemical of a particular class, certain number. We have two chemicals of a particular class, you're going to do modeling. And when that doesn't work out, means class specific QSA doesn't work out, then we call it for molecular similarity, like birds of a feather flock together. You know? So, where does the chemical belong in the chemical universe? And from there, can we make some sense? That is the last resort of risk assessment. So there are three alternative methods of testing evaluation in vivo, in vitro, in silico. In silico is the computer model. In vitro is the test tube. In vivo means using animals. Here is a cartoon about in vivo, in vitro, in silico. Now, here are two panels. One is experimental, another computational. If we do experiment, chemical physical property, or do bioassay like Ems mutagenicity, or genomics proteomics data, or you know, effect of chemicals of the gene, cost is high. On the other hand, if we can do computational study, theoretical molecular descriptor, like topological, 3D quantum chemical and whatnot, that become low cost. So if we have a certain training set of good quality data, based on that, if we can develop a good model, validated model, that can be used to evaluate other chemicals of the same kind. So, so that is the idea. So uh, experimental high cost, and uh, computational model low cost, but in practice, I think what should be done, computational model should be used as a digital support system. And then if there are critical cases where we uh, we need to know the, about the chemical about which we are not sure, we should be we should be really uh, testing that. Like uh, Professor Joseph Arcos, led Joseph Arcos, he was the US EPA's chief chemical carcinogen expert, he told, he wrote in his paper that there are three ways of uh, assessing a chemical. Structural criteria, functional criteria, guilt by association criteria. Structural criteria means if there are certain substructure, certain chemical, and certain attribute which is related to toxicity, then we can use that. And then functional criteria means, you know, if there is a cancer, cancer causing chemical, it can be genotoxic, it can be epigenetic, it can do many other things. If we know those data, we can use them. And finally, if we have a chemical which belongs to a very bad class, like like 5-natro-furan, 
chemical, you know, many of them are multi-target carcinogen. He has written that we should really tell that you test them. In our country, you know, when one child of a family is going bad, one boy, the grandmother say, well, who is their friend? You know, look at them. Birds of a feather flock together. So the same thing is applied to chemistry. So here is a quote from essential haiku, a Japanese. They saying the three paths through the ice spring grass. One is quicker, I take it. So that is the way it goes, both in drug design and risk assessment. It will go to the path of, try to go to the path of minimum resistance or minimum cost. Now, but the thing is, as Albert Einstein said, even in this dire situation, computers can help. He's saying computers are incredibly fast, accurate, and stupid. Human beings are incredibly slow, inaccurate, and brilliant. Together, they are powerful beyond imagination. So, computer and man, man and computer, or human being and computer, together, they can do a lot of wonderful things if done properly. Now, what is computational chemistry? I am going to the second of the three W's. The basic paradigm of QSAR is, or the religious statement I can say, is that property, bioactivity, toxicity, a function of structure. Okay. Here is Linus Pauling, a Nobel laureate in chemistry. He is saying that the structure we look for when we try to understand anything. He says, we like to understand and explain observed fact in terms of structure. He is a chemist. He is a well known chemist and he has a lot of work on, on a chemical bond and whatnot. Now, what is a structure? Here is a structure by the side of Lake Superior by RTP. Who jewel. You know, these structures, uh, rocks are maintained together by some physical force. There's physics, you know. Now, Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore, here is a quote. He says, I dive down into the depth of ocean of forms, hoping to gain the perfect part of the formless. So, at the ultimate level, we don't know what structure is sometimes. But then we try to do, you know, um, try to understand that using different formalities. So I go, I now come to the graph theoretical area again. Graph theory is a theory of structure in, in a particular chemical area. I have divided it into two parts. One is the left flank is called qualitative aspect. Oil are... Hello? In the, in the oil are, in the oil are, he started with 1736, and then Sylvester came up with the idea of chemical graph 1878. In the right side, I am talking about more quantitative descriptor. Left side is qualitative idea. Right side is quantitative descriptor. Dinar, Osaya, Randy, Kieran Hall, bunch of antagonistic, Balaban, Professor Balaban, and then our group, India and here. And finally, this was all, this was all, uh, a couple of index, a few index, small data set, and they did in 1983. Probably one of the first group in the world who did large number of chemical, diverse chemical structurally, and large number of indices. So this is the brief history of starting from 1736 until now in the area of graph theory application in USAR. So again, if I, if I summarize the evolution of this USAR with graph invariants, Sylvester, 1878, came up with the idea of chemical structure is a graph. Wiener started quantitative quantification of chemical structure using the descriptive number. Then Hosoya, Randig, Banchev, and Kier, and even including our group, we were doing small set QSAR 1 to index. Finally, in 1983, we developed the program Poly at the University of Minnesota, and then we started doing QSAR of Using robust statistical method like PCA, principal component analysis, rejection, PLS, and poly indices, which were a large number of indices instead of one or two. So that is what, and now if you go into the literature with programs like Dragon and others, you can compute thousands of descriptions. So, what is the structure business? Here is a poem by James Clerk Maxwell, the famous physicist. He says, at quite uncertain times and places, atoms left their heavenly path, and by fortuitous embraces, engendered all that being had. 
that is what they condense atoms they condense by you know just for fun they, they condense and though they seem to cling together and form association here yet sooner or later they burst into burst their tether and through the depths of space carrier then sometime down the line all these molecules will be mineralized no they can be broken down metabolically or otherwise no so that is the story atoms come together you know atoms go away like the like the bees they come to the flower they go away something like that that is the idea of james clerk maxwell of this is he wrote a nice poem and then the democritus this greeks you know greeks had a lot of ideas about various things including science he says by convention something is sweet by convention bitter by convention hot by convention cold by convention color but in really to the atoms and the void he said that structure is nothing but atoms and the void and and that was about what about 2000 years ago this greek man he thought about it so in terms of structure if we go to graph theory the structure of, if we look at the molecule as assembled entity assembly of atoms the structure of an assembled entity that is a molecule looked upon as a relationship of its constituent parts and if we look at graph g or the ve where v is a set at a set of atoms or set of nuclei nucleus and the e h set is a set of covalent bonds or any kind of bond it can any kind of bond that represents the molecule so the very nice relationship between the basic concept of graph and molecular structure thank harari professor harari who is considered by us to be the kind of a guru of graph theory his book is like a bible he talked about the versatility of the graphs he says that these things graph theory can be used as a structural model in the physical sciences social sciences linguistics semiotics and the humanities all the engineering science biology statistics operational research including management and industrial engineering so so this is in the journal of graph theory he wrote one of the editorials this is my picture with professor harari i met him last time in 2004 in newfoundland he was in a conference we were very good friends although i knew him from the 1980s uh at that time you know he wanted we wanted to give him an honorary phd from indian university he was interested but then he went to surgery and he passed away he was interested to come to india but unfortunately we could not do that but harari was a very good friend and he is a famous graph theorist as everybody knows his book is the standard book now the representation of structure by graphs formally how do you represent the structure by graph suppose we start with the set v 1 2 3 4 5 5 the descartes product of the set v is the binary you know uh, by the binary pairs ordered pairs 1 1 1 2 1 3 so that the first one comes from v second one also comes from v that could be 25 ordered pairs here if we take a subset of that like 1 5 5 1 2 5 5 2 this this few it is a binary relation defined on the set v how do you represent that professor hare told us that you try to draw it so if we draw that the graph of that relation r1 there are eight ordered pairs then every ordered pair can be represented by a directed graph a directed arc this is the uh, a directed graph of the of those binary relation and when there is a you know symmetric pair then we can put uh, substitute it by undirected path so this is the structure as undirected graph but now this undirected graph is very general it can be four way stock it can also represent molecule so it is a very general one but if we represent use this graph to represent molecule there could be multiple methane central vertex is carbon or are hydrogen or neopentane central carbon is carbon all are carbon or silicon tetrahedra silicon is a central atom bonded to four hydrogen so same graph same graph here can represent multiple chemical species multiple chemical substances so there are different here is the molecular structure acetamide the simple graph where we don't care for hydrogen at all or i would not show the 
uh, atoms even, then multigraph where we show the multiple ages, and then pseudograph what we do here because you know oxygen has lone pairs, we use lone pair as a as an arc from itself, H from one to itself. So this kind of graph which has double bond or multi multiple age, and then also self loop we call the pseudograph, and the pseudograph model can represent a lot of property that is uh, that is in the molecular species. And then, you know, I have written, and many people other have written that many of the chemical species can be represented by what we call the uh, planar graphs. What are planar graphs? Planar graphs are the graphs which, which are a graph is planar, if and only if it has no subgraph isomorphic to K5 and K33. This K5 and K33 was used by Professor Harari, but the original idea was developed by Kuradovsky, Kazimir Kuradovsky. So, Professor Harari told me in a conference that he once met Kuradovsky and Kuradovsky has the real Professor Harari. You have used these words K5, K33. Where does it come from? So Harari was a very funny guy. He said, he said, I told him with a folded hand, sir, I am the Siddhan. I put this name K. First K comes from Kazimir, second K is for Kuradovsky. And this old man, old mathematician who was very humble, he blasts. So K5, K33 is basically for Kazimir Kuradovs. K for Kazimir, K for Kuradovs. Now the chemical structure, you know, you can look at the structure from different angle. Here is a here is a structure you can see. But then if you invert the structure, you can see that now it is quite different. Same structure if you look at 180 degrees. So the same is true of molecule. That if you look at molecule at a different way, like here, there are there are different, you know, ways of doing it. Uh, so structural, topochemical, geometrical, then quantum chemical, different ways of uh, quantifying structure. And once we, in the chemical area, once we have a chemical, suppose from some, you know, plant or herb or some, some chemical, once we do, we determine the structure, we determine the formula. And then what Pro Professor Prelog in normal lecture is saying, once we know that, Rather, once you know the composition, then we want to know the constitutional formula of the structure. They describe the topology of the molecule. That means that is a chemical graph. Now, philosophy of mathematical chemistry. What we really do, in reality, a you know, liquid in a bottle or a solid in a bottle, we try to develop some structural model. And then using some different mathematical formula, Mathematical approaches, we try to develop a quantitative descriptor that could be either a number or could be a vector. That is, the Bungi, Bungi is a, wrote a book, he's a philosopher of science about method, models, and matter. Plato, you know, was a, Plato is considered to be the person who, who, who represented reality for the first time by mathematics. He was the art of the hydrogen air, icosahedron is the water. And Professor Nenath, realistic thing is that Plato was the first. Mathematical chemists of the world. So we are all there following. Uh, and then uh, what this graph theoretical indices do, you know, I, I wrote a paper where I said that they really, what they really, really do, they quantify the qualitative ideas like branching, complexity, cyclicity. I wrote a paper in the philosophy of philosophy of chemistry journal, Hille, where I described this thing. If anybody wants, I can send the paper. Now I will show some interesting graphs. You know, because we chemists also are not always boring people. Here are two cats. We had family cat, they passed away. Left one is Jaden, male cat, and uh, and our right one is Autumn, is a female cat. She was they were very good to us. And here is a molecule which is called felicine because it looks like a face of a cat, feline species. So this is felicine. This molecule has been so some chemists thought that this molecule should be named as felicine. This molecule looks like pterodactyl. So this is pterodactyl diene. There are two double bonds and looks like pterodactyl. And finally, this is a monkey graph I call Bandarga graph. Means you know benzene. Benzene has a cyclic structure, three double bond. So one artist is thought, how in the world can we realize that in the reality? He came up with the idea that six monkeys using their tails and hands, they can create a picture. Here you can see this is a double bond, this is a double bond, this is a double bond. So this is the art stimulated by chemistry. Okay, So the Bandarga graph is very interesting graph. Now characterization of molecular graphs. Once we have the molecular graph, how do we characterize them? 
Usually what we do, here is a molecular acetamide, here is a hydrogen suppressed graph, there are four atoms, and then we can have addition symmetry. You know, what is addition symmetry? Suppose here, two and two and three. Here between two and three, there is only one bond. So that's why entry is one. If there is no bond between them, the entry is zero. In addition symmetric, main diagonal usually is zero, but then Sometimes we chemists can put based on the our intuition what kind of what this 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 uh, what is what do they what do they represent like one is interested in molar volume or the by the van der Waals volume or electronegativity hydrogen donor donor hydrogen donor bond donor acidity hydrogen over accelerator basis all those kind of things can be shown and then I think once we have that uh, distance matrix. From the distance matrix, we can then uh, uh, calculate what we call the Wiener index. If we can take the upper triangular submatrix entries and then add them up, Wiener index, that is what Wiener did in 1947. So then we develop some information theoretic indices. We, our group has been in, involved in the development of information theoretic indices. How do you develop information theoretic index? So an appropriate set of elements from a molecular graph is taken, then they are Based on equivalence relation, they are partitioned. An equivalence relation is a kind of could be subjective. What I do, another person may not do that. So, the equivalence relation partitions the set of sets, uh, a set into disjoint subsets. An equivalence relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So, here is an idea. How do you do look at these two pictures? One is a old goat, another is an old sage. They are both, both long beards. If you define them in terms of beard, they will be equivalent. But if you go a little bit higher than the beard, then maybe it could be different. So that is the problem with equivalence relation. So I am not going to the mathematics of the equivalence relation just to show that there are some rigorous mathematics which is difficult to yeah, uh, difficult to explain in a short time. But here are some work we started. I started this work around 1975 and going on still. Here is the slide. Suppose there is a molecule. We look at the, these are the first order neighborhood. You no, know, every atom bonded to what in the first bonded. Then the second order neighborhood, then third order neighborhood. If we go to the first order neighborhood, this is the information content. Second order neighborhood information content different because in terms of second order neighbor, their partitioning become different. Now we use the information theoretic indices to uh, characterize the isospectral graph, which are very different, difficult, very pathological structure. They have the same eigenvalue pattern, but as you can see that higher order information indices, if these are two isospectral graphs, they can be discriminated using our information index. Now, coming back to that again picture, what is our overall overall idea that we are doing index development, then QSAR, QMSA, and finally digital support system for screening of chemicals. But then why do you screen? Here, not is the organic chemistry is saying that our goal to do all this chemistry is nothing but production of properties. Because we need, suppose we have a suicide chemical, we need a better suicide chemical. We need a, we have a lipstick today, we need a better one. We need a drug today, we need a better one. So what is the approach? This is the kind of mathematical idea that if we have a set of chemical, you can go two ways. One is either do experiment and using that find the number, the real number like water boils in 100 degree or instead of that if we start with the chemical structure develop a set of descriptor and then from that we can uh, predict the property which is the real number so main drivers of modern mathematical chemistry there is a need and then there are computer software available there are robot statistical method and finally using moore's law there is available more and more computer power now, where to apply computational chemistry? This is the third W, QSAR and chemical evaluation. Once we want to do QSAR, we have to have all the things ready. Here is a picture I saw from one of the uh, Delta Airlines. This is that says that these two guys want to fight. They have to be get ready. You cannot fight a sumo with a suit and coat like that. So there are four pillars of QSAR. One is good quality data, because I don't want to waste my good brain with lousy data. Adequately large database. We have data on two compounds, it doesn't do any good in, 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 in doing modeling. Then relevant descriptor, how do you describe the structure? And finally, proper statistical method. 
Now, all descriptors are not created equal. Okay. So we need to select here our Chanakko said, everywhere you have to don't have a good thing. So he lays, he lays, no manikang, mukti kang, no gaje gaje, sadhavana is arvatra, chandanang no one. Everywhere you don't have a good thing. Neither the sandal, not every person who looks like a saint is not a saint. So he lays, he lays, no manikang, mukti kang, no gaje gaje, sadhavana is arvatra, chandanang no one. We have to remember that. So, and then, but we have to recite. This is a Greek mythology. Persephone who was abducted. He said, Persephone has sorrow as has grief. The world and its tales must be told in brief. So, uh, we wrote a paper on Persephone, uh, with Persephone principle. And then sometimes they say people, too many descriptors. At one time, we calculated 90 descriptors uh, for 369 to chemical. We did principal component analysis, found out the first 10 principal component instead of 90 index. Explain 92 percent variance of the data, and then we interpreted the pieces. And but then we have to understand the intrinsic dimensionality of this space. And, and here is a method. I am not going to talk about this because we have the Mayum that later on we will give a more elaborate talk about the statistical methodology. But I am showing one thing here that if we do the wrong one, yet naive correlation coefficient becomes high. True one becomes low. So sometimes it could be alluring to people who are beginners don't know to go to the wrong path. Here are some references. Here is a model we developed for over 1,000 chemical boiling point. Here is another interesting slide. You know, recently with Professor Didoer's group, from which Dr. Lungu will come to give a talk later. You know, we did some collaborative study on the blood brain barrier entry of chemicals. Now I am interested in blood brain barrier entry because. You know, a lot of people around the world are living more, and there are problem with a different kind of neurological problem. In psychiatry, they say that you know, the there are two kinds of uh, people with mental disorder. One is a neurotic, which are less problematic, psychotic more. So the idea is that neurotic builds castles in the air, psychotic lives in it, and psychiatric takes takes rain from both. So we need to do see that how we can take molecule to the brain. Otherwise, they cannot be drugged. So here is a model with some 415 chemical using our set of 90 indices, 75 percent accuracy model with the DDA group or Romanian group, 75 percent. But when we add it together, they were about the same. That means better is not better. If we have more index, maybe they somehow intuitively, although developed as distinct. But they can quantify very similar aspect of molecular structure. We have to keep that in mind that just because we have more descriptor, that doesn't mean we have a better model. Now, some of our QSA references. I'm giving some references here. Predictive toxicology. Here is paper in the Indian Journal of Chemistry. And then we did some entry of drugs into brain. Here are some of the references. Design of separate aircraft fuel deizing agent. You know, I did a work with how to do practical application in the Safer DIC agent, then design of mosquito repellent. Dr. Natarajan probably will talk about this. Also, Dr. Apura Bhattacharya, he did some work with us. He will give a talk about anti malarial drug design. Here is a paper in the design of anti malarial drugs. And the thing is, you know, what we need, we need descriptor based QSAR for large and diverse set because there are two ideas one is a congenitality principle, and the diversity we get the diversity principle. But when we do the congeniality principle, take very similar kind of molecule like alkane, alcohol, barbiturate, which are not don't have much diversity, that doesn't really tell much about the power of body disease. Here is a conference organized in May 1999 you know, at our university. And two things came out of this. One is Dr. Milne, Bill Milne, you know, who was the editor chief of this uh, of this uh, journal, Journal of Chemical Information Computer Science, he told us. If you look at the organic chemistry book, how much of this book contains alcohol or alkane, this kind of molecule? Very few. He said, look at other chemicals. If you cannot make sense of other chemicals, you know, then people will not understand what is our group. And also, uh, our director asked me that what is the quality of this group? I told him this group of people collectively had a total published, uh, totally uh, almost 4,500 published papers. So these are the very Interesting, important group. Here's some editorial I wrote about this that you have to do some uh, what is the landscape, um, diversity. 
and they made the journal where I be editor in chief, and I have been able, I have been advocating this thing in my journal. And here are some QS here that we did. 450 diverse chemical boiling point, and then 3682, uh, 3692, and more than 10,000 chemicals from partition prohibition. And then we did a study on solar land with 248,000, over 248,000 chemicals. What can we do with good QS here? One is drug design. Suppose we start with the structural hypothesis, then develop a few ke candidate chemicals, they do QS here. Then synthesize the chemical, then do the compound library, and then do the uh, you know uh, screening of a large uh, data set, and then from there you develop the lead, and then if the lead is good, go for lead optimization, or or you go back to your to your cycle. And in case of benign by design, means the chemical structure if we want to make. Suppose for the suicide chemical, I have to see does it affect? Is it a non -to Is it less toxic or effective? We have to do, we can do that using computational model, and then those chemicals which are predicted to be effective and less toxic, they can be candidate. Okay, now the sixth sense of mathematical chemistry. Mathematical chemistry is about macro and micro. As I told you before, that if there are a large number of chemicals, mathematical chemistry can help. Charles Darwin, from other thing, he realized the power of mathematics. Look, here is Cohen is saying mathematics is biology's next microscope, only better. And biology is mathematics, is next physics only better. So people are realizing the power application of mathematics. Now, if we look at the multidimensional space, our Rabindranath Tagore said, Lukale bhule khuje bahir gara, means because you were elusive, I was looking for you everywhere. The same is true of chemicals. Suppose if there are objects in the one dimensional space, they look jumbled up, two dimension separated, three dimension, little doubt separated, more clear. So in the when Leeuwenhoek discovered the microscope, he, he gave the greater visibility to the world of microbes. And using this descriptor, we give a greater visibility in the world of molecules. So the molecular descriptor is a kind of mathematical or computational microscope. So understanding drug resistance using differential QSA, you know, you know, drugs become resistant. So I, I did a thing we call differential QSA. So uh, this molecule was tested both wild and mutant type and then we did the ridge regression you know, for the both mutant and uh, wild using computer descriptor and then we found that of the 20 most important descriptors only two were common so the the the, 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 the target it was it was telling us which kind of descriptor looking for in the molecule this idea i got when i was doing research in 1971 only in 2011 i got the data to test it and publish, so it got took, took me 40 years to publish the paper. Now, molecular similarity. Now, usually they say similar structure have similar properties, but the point is what is similarity? Similarity has a subjective approach. Sub similarity is subjective. Any person can tell well given to subject how similar, how different they are. So here is a cloud. Here is a another animal. Here is weasel, and here is well. Okay. And then let us see what Shakespeare is saying in Hamlet. Do you see the yonder cloud that is almost in the shape of a camel? He said by the mass, yes. Me thinks like a weasel, it is back like a weasel. Like a well is like a well. So basically, any idea can be put into this into this cloud, the camel, weasel, or well, depending on the person's subjective attribute. There is one problem. Subject another is non transitive means you know A is similar to B, B is similar to C, go on A and Z could be quite dissimilar. Here's an idea from Louis Carroll, who's a mathematician. If we start with why white, look at white and while they differ by one letter only, we can say they are similar. Then while to whale and sale, and ultimately we go to stock, stack, slack, and black. So from why we start by the similarity criteria, they differ by one letter. We come to black. We know that's not true. On the other hand, in real situation, how can we tell whether they are, you know, white goes to black? It is too far. It's difficult to say. So the same is true in case of molecules. You see, if we add one carbon at a time, and then this molecule A and this molecule Y, they are quite different, like white and black. So in case of mathematics, this similarity is based on tolerance relationship. 
is reflexive and symmetric, not tran not transitive. That is the problem. And then Humpty Dumpty is saying, when I use a word, I just mean what I choose to mean, neither more, neither less. That means we have to be quantitative. We use Euclidean distance among molecules in the multidimensional space to determine their similarity. Here is one work. What we did? We do the KNN approach. Took the K means number of neighbor, five, ten, up to fifty for every molecule, and then try to take the arithmetic mean as the estimate. And then here is the PC one, PC two plot of that three six nine two chemicals. And then if we take one chemical from that, and in terms of Euclidean distance, take these three, you can see what are their structures. Although they are not quite different, quite very similar, but you can see the clear distance. The first one is 0.47. That means there is no chemical in that space, which is at a lower distance than that. So that's how we get. So this is the probe chemical. These are the analogs, selected analog based on equilibrium distance. And we can order them. And I am tempted to speculate that if we take these three pictures, the last left one is by Salvador Dali. Middle one by Robin Nath Tagore, and this one by the granddaughter, young teenager, the granddaughter of my one by one of my cousins who lives in Calcutta, Titir Sarkar. I think that if somebody can develop a descriptor, we can describe them like the like the three molecules here. We can describe with three graphs or three pictures also. So the problem with, with similarity is all cases are unique, very similar to the others. This, he was in a cocktail party, T. S. Eliot. On the other hand, when Analogs are distant, they are not easy to interpret. About here, here is one PC1 PC2 plot of a set of 400, 4, 453 chemicals. If there is a chemical here in the middle, there are too many, a lot of analog. It is not easy to, uh, to understand. But then if there is a chemical here and there is no, no close neighbor, it is not easy to say how the chemical will behave. It's an odd ball. So here are some problems with similar two problems. We have to be very judicious in their application. And then similarity also very important. Recently, you know, I found out that uh, mothers, when they're pregnant, when they're exposed to these environmental chemicals like algalochlorine, their children develop autism. Autism is a problem all over the world. So, but those similarities with subtle similarity and many, many thousands of industrial chemicals are potentially endocrine disruptors. So one can do good quality work using high dimensional space where this problem can be solved. This is an enormous problem of public health worldwide. Now, I did some work in the Ayurvedic medicine, one paper, how to understand Ayurvedic medicine from structure activity point of view. And then once we have the space, one can one can cluster the chemicals. Suppose I have 2,000 chemicals to test, but then I don't have money. I have only 12. I cluster them in the 12 cluster and take one from each cluster. That is the approach. You know. This thing that I am showing, you know, Rabindranath Tagore has a song, Tumiki Keboli Chobi, Sutu Pote Leka. Are you aware of a picture just depicted on a canvas? Yap, slip, ek, tasvira. So, all this thing that I am showing in the picture is all picture and use. Here is a work that they, they did on, on our, based on our method, they adopted the Basak method in the 90s. And Professor Dennis Rupre wrote an interesting review article making molecules by numbers. And then this is the molecule that uh, Abjon, which is now part of Pfizer, they discovered using our poly software and our methodology of clustering. Now I go to tailored similarity. Means you know sometimes you know we do similarity, but then you know uh, similarity with respect to what? Means domain specific similarity. We did some work in that area. That if we do arbitrary similarity, then you can see that the predicted property is much predictivity much lower. If we do Taylor, then it is much, much much better similarity. So here Walter Scott is saying, oh, many a chap at random send finds Mark the archer little man, and many a word at random spoken may soothe or wound the heart that is broken. So if we do arbitrarily, means we say, well, here is my similarity space. Let mother nature or molecule obey. Mother nature doesn't have any obligation to do that. We have to look at what Mother Nature is saying. We have to tailor our approach to data. Then that will give us good data. Some QMSA, Taylor, you may say references. Here are some work we did. 
Now we go to biodescriptor. We are living in an age of biology. 20th century was the age of, age of, age of chemistry, or physics, and other. Now we are age of biology. Where everywhere we listen to biological things. Now, here I have to talk a little bit about Dr. Ashish Nandi, who was giving a talk, supposed to, but cannot because of the medical condition. I met Dr. Nandi in the first Indo US workshop in Vishwavati 1998. He was doing the work on DNA. I invited him to come to Duluth and fund it. Um, at that time, I had multi million dollar grant. I invited people like Nandi and then Randig and Gu and Brachko. Brachko will give it, Dr. Brachko will give a talk in this conference. And we started doing what you call the alignment free sequence descriptor. At present, there could be a few hundred papers. After we published a couple, there was the excitement worldwide from China and Eastern Europe and India all over. There could be a few hundred papers. There was a growth part in this space. So, what are biodescriptors? Biodescriptors descriptors for biological sequence, DNA, proteomics, protein. So, when I was a graduate student, I read this poem If your chromosomes are XYY and you are a naughty, naughty guy, your crimes the judge won't even try because you have a legal reason why. He will raise his hands and gently sigh. I guess for this you get a buy. Means XYY people, they are naturally. They can be violent and judge won't give any punishment. So rule was what? If I'm XY, somebody is XY, or he does something wrong to me, don't get any punishment. But now it is quite complicated. So this is the uh, picture I got from one of my collaborators in Indiana University, proteomics map, you know. He can effect of a chemical on a proteomics map, and there are over thousand proteins. So how do you characterize that instead of one descriptor? So we, we do so alignment free descriptor, alignment free sequence descriptor. How do you do alignment? For example, this molecule here, pridin, and this molecule is benzene derivative. If we want to do align them, carbon, 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 but nitrogen and carbon, they are not easy to align because they are different. How do you align them? So in, in order to compare molecules, either we can do atom by atom, align them, or we can do alignment free. For example, if we want to compare these two famous actresses, you know, how do we compare them? How do we compare them? There will be two ways. One is eye by eye, smile by smile, eye by eyebrow, or holistically, you know, personality, cognitive ability. Similarly, for molecule, we can superimpose atom on atom, compare cycle, bond, or overall like properties, boiling point, vapor pressure, partition coefficient. So our alignment based descriptor, like a kind of holistic descriptor instead of the uh, alignment based method of blast, which is done, we have de we have developed the alignment. And here is the thing Dr. Nandi came up with the idea given a DNA sequence how do we plot adenine goes left, guanine, thymine, cytosine. And then, if we do, do this for a uh, what, what is really going on, start the sequence, converted into a, converted into a sub kind of a graph, a card. And then we develop invariant to characterize it. And here is a one uh, example what kind of graph we get for one for human, one for the moon, you know, for, you know, uh, for their uh, beta globin gene. And then here's an idea how to do that. Suppose there is a graph. So A, T, G, G, A, T, then G, G, T. And then what we can do, we can have what we call the matrix, we call D by D matrix for every point. You know, uh, what we do, we can we can we can take the ratio of the through bond distance, which is topological distance divided by the geometrical or Euclidean distance, and then we can use that matrix to develop this script. So that this sequence property, similarity approach, they characterize Zika strain. We have used in the Zika strain, Dr. Rasko. And Dr. Nandi and us, and here is you can see that Zika's PCA plot and self organizing map. You can see that we can discriminate among the Zika of different historical areas. And then we are in the age of COVID. This uh, slide I got from my friend, Professor Paul Major of Canada, Newfoundland, that 2020 was the year of mask, but 2021 we are having the vaccine. So, good news about that. And then we did some research using our alignment principles descriptor. Using strictly Mars and SARS, and then COVID. And you can see that using our descriptor, we can discriminate them pretty well. 
Professor Brasco may have may discuss this in his talk more in details. Here are some alignment with sequence descriptor references. You know, and then we started a little bit, you know, when we are having all this uh, famous mathematical chemistry at our university, I thought that why not, you know, do some conference in India to expose our Indian young people to this emerging subject. So we developed a in the US workshop on mathematical chemistry in 1998. Professor Dilip who will give a talk later. He was the co-chair from India. I was the chairman from USA. Later on, I developed another series you know, where I was the chair from, it is for more mainly more student orientation. And then uh, South Americans were coming to our conferences. So what I did, uh, we developed a North South America and a mathematical chemistry workshop series. I was the chair from North America and then two people, Villa Vesas and uh, Guillermo Restrepo, they were the chairman from, from South America. So here is the feature from the first interview workshop, Professor Sina and myself in the inauguration under the Mango tree of Tagore. And here's the, you know, here is the emblem or whatever cover of this you know, series. Here is a talk going on, and is a picture. 2005, fourth Indo US workshop in Pune. This is Indo US workshop, first Indo US lecture series. It was done in Bangalore. And this is the picture by the Andes. I think, first mathematical chemistry workshop of the American in Bogota, Colombia. So these conferences, there are some conferences going on in the US workshop on mathematical chemistry. And then the US lecture series, the International Academy of Mathematical Chemistry has conference, the International Society, of which I was, I was its president for a few years. They used to organize conferences. And then out of this came this book, Advances in Mathematical Chemistry and Applications. What we did, because mathematics and chemistry have interacted for 2,000 years from the time of the Greeks, we took all the symbols of the mathematics and chemistry and alchemy and created a conical flask earlier by flask this is the this is the cover of the book and is a 700 page book two volume one of the standard book in mathematical chemistry and then i am working on a, a big data book about 35 authors from asia europe and north america and south america 20 chapters now this is what i thought i will discuss Optimal representation of molecular structure, calculation of molecular descriptor, and quantitative structure activity relationship, quantitative molecular similarity relationship. And then we'll show how they can be used in the decision support system. I think I did that briefly. So, where are we going now? As I see it, as I see it, it's a confluence of three flows, just like Ganga, Yamuna, and Saraswati in India. In Prabhaka Shangam, the para descriptor, which has a pan descriptor approach. In the physical property area, as I described before, it started with Kamban and Fraser, ultimately came up with what I call our group has named the chemo descriptor. Then graph theoretical approach started in a sense from uh, Sylvester and Harry Wiener. Those are also chemo descriptors, but then more recently, data have been generated from from the effect of chemicals as a biological system, like proteomics, genomics, metabolomics, something like that. So basically, these are three flows. In the chemo descriptor, there are two flows. Bio descriptor, there are multiple flows. And these three flows are coming together. We are seeing the integrated bio, chemo bio based approach. That is what I call chemo bio descriptor approach, or integrated, or integrated QSAR. So here is a slide, it's a little busy slide. How do we do? What we did, we took the chemistry descriptor, bio descriptor, and then we tried to see that for six different cell level toxicity data, how do they work? We found out that neither chemo descriptor nor bio descriptor alone do a good job. In some cases, chemo descriptor do a good job. In other cases, bio descriptor do a good job. But in no toxicity data out of these six, or for all of them, neither class of the descriptor works. So basically, jury is still out that where we'll go. So, Kovadimas, where are we going? Are we descriptive? Chemical descriptor only, complex bio descriptor only, or individual biomarker? Biomarker is a big deal in biology, or all the above together? So, this question is an open question now. So 
here is a quote from Poincare. He's saying that science is a manner of bringing together facts which appearance is separate, though they are bound together by some natural and hidden keys. This came out as clear biodescriptor. Today we may not know, you may not know, you know, how they are connected at what level, but then we are using them, we are trying to understand it. Maybe sometime down the line, we we'll get what you call the grand unification. So in a cautionary note, Burton Russell is my favorite philosopher. He said, when you work in a small area, you know, our intuition works very well. Intuition, like an instinct, is admirable in those customary surroundings which have molded our habits, the animal, you know. But when totally incompetent, as soon as it's the surroundings are changed, you know, in which, which demands some non habitual mode of action. Means, you know, if we, so this is in a book, Mysticism and Logic. So we need combination, and who, who are better uh, integration picture than Tagore and Einstein, who met once, or maybe I don't know more than once, and they discuss. They agreed to agree, and they agreed to disagree. Maybe ultimately, you know, um, but then they talked with each other. They did not become disagreeable. So if we don't agree with each other, we can disagree, but we should not be disagreeable. Here is the place I live. You know, I am giving a talk in this window. And in winter time, it becomes minus 40. This is the kind of thing. And like all our descriptor, you know, here is the shovel I have to use. Also, I have a machine, so I have to use different technology, like our QSR, they use different technology. So the enormous landscape. What is the enormous landscape we are working on? Here is a quote from Professor Kenichi Fukui, a Nobel lecture. He's saying that chemistry is a science of terrific and terrible individuality where Every atom is individual. It should not be avoided by average. That is important. On the other hand, in a remarkable paper in the British Journal for the Philosophy of Science in 1950, von Bartelanby saying that not only general aspects, viewpoint, but also we find isomorphic laws in different fields of science. So that is the area. We are, on the one hand, one is saying that every atom is unique. You have to get attention to them. On the other hand, this philosopher of science is saying that across fields, you can have a lateral movement and you can see very similar kind of ideas and laws. They work you know, across the board. So this is the picture of the first people, first into this workshop who came in our conference in 1998. Some of them I took to visit the Taj Mahal. Many of them. Some of them have passed away, but many of them are, are still active in the field. So with that, I will say, Ashish Dhanabad, both, both Dhanabad, thank you very much and say, you know, good morning to our Americans listeners. And then, you know, the Romanians, I will say, Nakte Bona, good night. And the Indians, good night and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, some questions. One yeah. question is uh, there in the chat box. So okay. Where is the chat box now? How do I ask, how do I access the chat box? So you Let might be having some public chat uh, icon over there. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to see that where that is because this. Uh, this okay okay let, let me let me close this file maybe then i can be able to see yeah okay uh, in the left side public chat is that right yes sir yeah okay okay but uh, good evening and uh, then what uh, what is the question participants yeah Ashish Mitra, there is all request turned out okay. Then Dr. Shobita. Okay. Okay, must question is whether Dr. Shobita. Yeah, let me see uh, what is saying. Uh, 
whether optical properties of molecules explain yeah dr natarajan and i developed what do you call the chirality descriptor he will describe that in his in his talk and we call the we, de we had de developed chirality algebra and basically when we found out for mosquito repellent that different you know chiral forms have different properties one is inactive one is active then we developed quantitative relative chirality index we published some papers but dr natarajan will talk about that in more detail yeah okay and then what is this so there is another question uh, yeah which from who ashish mitra sir yeah that he wants something more about uh, you to yeah. say about ridge regression or oh, ridge regression is just, i can send him papers about ridge regression you know there is a way this is actually what happens if you take if you take more independent variable than dependent variable then ordinary OLS ordinary least square doesn't work out. It gives overfitting. But then Subhaprata Mujumdar will talk about this in more details. He is a statistician. Okay, I will tell him particularly to tell about that. But then this is a PCA, PCA principal component analysis, partial least square and ridge regression. These three are robust statistical method where you can use more independent variable than dependent variable. And then I think Subhaprata Mujumdar. Also, he has other methods, machine learning, like random forest, which he has used in our collaborative study. Okay. Any other question? Hello. Yeah. Sir, my question is regarding this endocrine disruptors that you are talking about. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, is is that uh, that uh, the data that you have showing that is a home study? My question is that if the, the drugs are uh, acting such a way, then, then why there is no contradiction on them? And uh, well, what the extent? Thing is, yeah, thing is, you know, the endocrine disruptor, what happens, the different part of the molecule, they mimic our endocrine, our hormones. And how they mimic, it is not very clear. So I think of the industrial chemicals, which there are 86,000, probably 60,000 are 60,000 are suspect, OK? So but some people can do more subtle research to see how we can relate drugs or hormones or body with those industrial chemicals so that we can avoid them. No. So this is an interesting area, ongoing study. Actually, my study is, oh, yeah, sir. Ah, sir. Tell. So my study is on uh, blood brain barrier crossing to no nasal drug delivery of nanotech based, based on nanotechnology of this particular hormonal drugs anti suicidal tendencies so uh, it, will there be any effect for a pregnant woman if we we have to check that also do we need yeah to check yeah that? yeah sure 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 because you know uh, we have to check because nano substance again the more complicated it is not easy to characterize their structure no Yes, sir. It's more difficult. Yes, sir. Absolutely, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. That that is that's a good area. Nano is being used for drug delivery, you know. Even for, for this delivery of the vaccines or the COVID, they are being used. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. Okay, you're welcome. So there is another question from Hiteshi Tandon. Uh, how many descriptors should be ideally taken at a time for a QSAR study so as to obtain good model? Well, you know, there is no limit over there. On the other hand, you have to see that, you know, you have to look at the predictivity of the model. And then you go from there you try, you know, which ones are predictive, which one are the good model. That's it. Okay, uh, no more questions are there. If uh, the participants, uh, you have any question, you can directly ask, sir, mm, by unmuting your uh, mic. Okay, thank you, sir, for your uh, 
uh, wonderful session. You have given many informations. Hopefully, many of the participants they have enjoyed and um, they uh, will get help from your uh, this lecture. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye.